partners are important. But the name is Schmuckler, and with a name like Schmuckler, I better be good. Well, I had a speech prepared, but as I've been listening to at least some of these speeches, I, I'm reminded of a fantasy that I've had over the years. You know that movie, Liar, Liar, with, uh, what was his name, Jim Carrey? I've always wondered, what would our American politics uh, sound like if the various politicians in our country were afflicted with the same wish that had afflicted Jim Carrey, that they couldn't tell anything but the truth? It would really sound quite different, as I've been reminded listening here today. When I was 15, my dad told me why I wasn't cut out to be a politician. Dad said to me, Andy, you're too straightforward. You insist on saying what you think, and that's not how politics works. Well, he was right, and I've been reminded all over again today just how right Dad was. That was a half century ago, and in that half century, I've spent those 50 years looking for the truth about why some societies help their people and why others hurt them. In all those years, I never thought of running for political office. But here we are on Labor Day, and I can see things happening. You know, we're, today's the day we're supposed to honor the people in America who, are, who work, the working families of America. But a lot of the people that we hear from who give lip service to that haven't been honoring America's workers. They've been trashing them. They've been helping to ship American jobs overseas. They've been helping to rearrange our pension laws so that their pensions get cut or even eliminated. And they've been setting up the playing field between workers and the people who employ them so that their wages have been slipping even while the companies that employ them have been thriving. You know, it used to be in America that when, up until just about a decade ago, that as America's productivity per hour of work increased, Americans' wages per hour increased along with it. But about 10 or 12 years ago, that stopped being the case. And it's because of policies that are pushed by some of the people who've been up here on the stage. The workers' productivity has continued to increase, but the wages have been flat, and all the benefits of the, the rewards for this increased productivity have gone into corporate profits. We've been hearing from people that corporations are people. Well, I'd like to remind some of those same people that working people really are people, and they deserve better. to get a better shape is why one of the reasons why I, at the age of 66, for the first time in my life, am running for public office to replace our present incumbent. But there's another reason. My devotion to the truth, and I'm running for, a, a, for my platform is truth for a change, because my whole life has been devoted to the truth. Liar, liar wouldn't affect me a bit. Dishonesty on our politics. I mean, politics is always about shading the truth. I know American history. I've studied American history. I've taught American history. I've written about American history. The politicians are always people who are not the same as just truth tellers. But the dishonesty in our politics has become so bad. And the lies are so often defeating the truth in our political arena that I figure now is the time the truth needs its champions in the political arena. And that's why I'm running for truth for a change. The America I grew up in was one in which the government did play a role. We built it together, some of our prosperity, the government did play a role in creating a thriving middle class. The GI Bill helped to build that middle class. The protection of workers' rights helped to build that middle class. The government was an instrument for the average Americans, and if we fight together, Americans on both sides of our political divide, Americans of goodwill who believe in justice, then Americans can have a fair shape and we can be a land of opportunity for all our citizens. When I, in the America I was growing up in, we had a politicians, both liberal and conservative, come together on the genuine values that we share. 
and on the basis of our common values to achieve our common purposes, we can have that kind of an American political system again. One where it practices the arts of compromise, that deals with civility, and that does the people's business. The America I grew up in, there was a general respect for values both liberal and conservative. And I understanding that both liberalism and conservatism are part of the heart of America, part of the dialogue our founders gave us. We can have that kind of America with a spirit of mutual respect, once again, and a recognition that we are all Americans. I'm concerned because I see an assault on the foundations of our American democracy. What we need is a government that's again for the people and by the people, not just for a powerful elite. We need public servants who are here to serve the public and not just their own ambitions. We need both political parties to put the good of the nation ahead of getting partisan advantage. And we need, above all, for our democracy to work, we need the truth to defeat the lie. I don't make promises readily, because I, I always make sure that I keep my promises, but I make two promises to you. I will speak the truth as I understand it. I promise that. And I will treat the good of every American as being just as important as that of the richest and most powerful. I hope you'll remember that on election day, because I do keep my promises. Let, let me close by saying, you probably have noticed that in terms of that I am not the richest campaign. You don't look around and see that there's all kinds of money that's been poured into the trappings of what our politics are about. I don't have that much money. I'm not even eager to have that much money. I am eager to speak the truth to the people of this district and have the truth prevail. And I ask you, is money going to beat the truth in this collection? It's up to you. Thank you.